Hello, and welcome back to A Curious Kowalski. I'm your host, Andrew. Today, we're embarking on a remarkable journey, traveling back in time to delve into the world of ancient Western philosophy. We'll be setting our sights on the ancient city of Miletus in Ionia, in modern-day Turkey. This vibrant city was not just a hub of commerce and culture, but also the cradle of Western philosophy. Here, the philosophers of the Milesian school, pioneers like Thales, Anaximander, and Anaximenes, looked at the world around them and said, let's figure this out. Before we delve into the fascinating lives of these incredible thinkers, let's take a moment to appreciate their shared spirit of curiosity. It's the drive to question, to wonder, and to explore that ties us all together. From us here at A Curious Kowalski, to you, our inquisitive viewers, to the great minds of the Milesian school. In a world dominated by myths and legends, these intellectual trailblazers from Miletus led a revolution of thought. They swapped out supernatural explanations for rational ones, birthing an early form of scientific inquiry. Their radical thinking paved the way for modern science. Now, an important note of caution, the lives and legacies of these philosophers are often shrouded in mystery. We're dealing with partial records, fragmented texts, and an ongoing debate among scholars interpreting these intellectual jigsaw puzzles. But that's part of the intrigue, and we're here to uncover as much as we can. So let's get started. And where better to begin than with the first of these fascinating figures, the man who dared to question everything, Thales of Miletus. Imagine yourself in this setting. You witness a man navigating the bustling streets of Miletus, his focus not on the people or the market stalls, but the skies above. He's so engrossed in the celestial ballet unfolding overhead that he bumps into objects. Yet he continues, undeterred, his mind consumed by cosmic mysteries. This, my friends, is Thales in a nutshell the man who made the heavens his guide. Our journey begins around 624 BCE with Thales, who was renowned for his intellectual prowess and versatility. He held the esteemed title of one of the seven sages of Greece and was a local luminary, with the roles of astronomer, a businessman, a statesman, and a philosopher under his belt. Thales was truly a man of many talents, an accolade that was far from ordinary in his time. Living in the epoch where divine intervention was the de facto explanation for all phenomena, Thales charted a different course. He ventured into the realms of the natural world to seek answers. His proposition, water was the arche, or the fundamental essence of all things. Picture that. According to Thales, your chair, your breakfast, even you, everything originated from water. It might sound ludicrous, but Thales was essentially trying to discern a unifying element in the bewildering maze of existence, a profound endeavor indeed. And Thales had more up his sleeve. He remarkably predicted a solar eclipse in 585 BCE, a feat akin to hitting a bullseye where blindfolded in a time bereft of sophisticated astronomical equipment. The mystery of how he accomplished this remains. Did he discern cosmic patterns, pioneered an early form of astronomy? We can only speculate. Here's what we do know. Thales spearheaded the shift from mythology to rational thought. His audacity to question, observe, and theorize sparked a revolution that continues to reverberate through the annals of time. As we venture further into this journey, let's carry Thales' spirit of relentless curiosity with us. Remember, as this pioneering philosopher put it, the most difficult thing in life is to know yourself. So let's probe the enigma of the cosmos, and perhaps, in this process, uncover a few self-truths. Following in Thales' footsteps, we find Anaximander. Seen here as one of Raphael's ancient scholars in the School of Athens, was a sage whose innovative thinking would shape the world in ways he couldn't have fathomed. Rather than sticking with the tangible, like Thales' water, Anaximander introduced a concept that was harder to grasp, the aperon, or the boundless, indefinable origin of all things. This idea was a radical departure and marked a key shift in ancient philosophy. Yet, Anaximander was not only a deep thinker, but also a practical one. Anaximander gave us what is believed to be the world's first geographical map. In a time when the world was a vast, uncharted mystery, he dared to draw a picture of it. His map wasn't just a first step in geography, it was a symbol of human curiosity, our inherent urge to explore and understand the world around us. Bear in mind, Anaximander's groundbreaking attempt to visualize the world happened centuries before the Waldsmuller map, which in 1507 first depicted the New World of North and South America in their correct positions. We're talking about a staggering 2,200 year interval from Anaximander to Waldsmuller. Can you imagine it? From a rudimentary map etched on a tablet to a detailed geographical representation of the globe as we know it today. 
It's a testament to human curiosity and our incessant thirst for understanding the world around us. Just as Anaximander lit the way for future geographers, his intellectual flame continues to inspire us even now. Transitioning from the profound thoughts of Anaximander, we find ourselves in the intellectual sphere of Anaximenes, a successor to Thales and Anaximander. He emerged as another luminary of the Milesian school. Anaximenes took the groundwork laid by his predecessors and gave it a unique twist. Rather than water or the indefinite, Anaximenes proposed air as the fundamental principle of the universe. His choice of air isn't as arbitrary as it might seem. Consider for a moment the all-pervasive and ever-changing nature of air. It can be a gentle breeze on a spring day, a howling gale during a storm, or the invisible oxygen we need for every breath. To Anaximenes, these different forms of air represented the transition of the essential element of the cosmos. But Anaximenes didn't stop at the atmosphere. He ventured far beyond to speculate about the nature and shape of our planet. His audacious theory suggested that the Earth was flat and floated on a cushion of air. Although we know today the Earth isn't flat, Anaximenes' idea still held a revolutionary spark. His theory sparked discourse of the shape and position of the Earth within the cosmos, which was a catalyst for further exploration and understanding. The brilliance of Anaximenes' ideas lies not in their factual accuracy by today's standards, but in the audacious curiosity that led him to question and explore. His philosophies played a crucial role in moving human thought from supernatural explanations to naturalistic and rational ones thereby carving a path for future scientific discourse. We've now journeyed through the philosophical landscapes of Thales, Anaximander, and Anaximenes. From the water of Thales, through the boundless apparent of Anaximander, to the air of Anaximenes. We've explored the shifting terrains of their thoughts and the remarkable legacy they left behind. As we wrap up our visit to ancient Miletus, we realize that the real power of these philosophers lies not in their specifics and their theories, but in their groundbreaking approach to understanding the world a methodology driven by curiosity, questioning, and rational thought, the very foundation of scientific spirit we hold dear today. From the ancient streets of Miletus to the fascinating minds of Thales, Anaximander, and Anaximenes, we've traversed vast intellectual terrains today. These pioneers dared to see the world differently, to question, to explore, and ultimately to set the foundations of the natural philosophy that has evolved into the science we know today. Yet even as we stand on the shoulders of these giants, looking out at the sprawling vista of knowledge they helped shape, we realize that they were just at the beginning. Every answer we find only leads to more questions. Every mystery solved only unveils deeper ones. Isn't it truly astonishing that thousands of years later, we are still driven by the same profound curiosity that ignited the minds of these ancient philosophers? So in the spirit of these Milesian thinkers, let's wrap this up with a question that's worth pondering. What accepted truths or conventions of our own era should we be challenging today? I'll leave you with that thought. Thanks for joining us on this journey through time with the Curious Kowalski. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future updates. Until next time, stay curious and keep questioning.